which is famine, or Rahab. Now we have Rahab, or Rahab, scripturally speaking, who was a prostitute and um, became one of the, the grand, uh, you could say, mothers, you understand, of the Israelitish kings, you understand, because she accepted the true God, or the El Elohe Israel, or the God of the Hebrews. And she was joined to the true God and joined to his people. You know what I'm saying? So she was spared, even though there was a curse and a death sentence on Jericho. And interesting enough, Jericho relates to the phases of the moon. You know what I'm saying? So the moon, notice the moon, they use the moon as a crescent. Different phases and different angles, different countries, Arab countries, have the moon. And we know that they were influenced by the ancient Sabians. And the ancient Sabians were moon worshippers before the conversion of the Queen of Sheba. You understand, Nagish to Makedo, Ya'azeb Nagist, by Nagu Selamin, according to the historical mythos, to the true father god. You understand, to the true sun god, some would say, but the sun being a type. The sun being used as a type, expression type, like today we have slangs, a way of communicating big ideas in little words or phrases. But let's, let me just touch on this and we'll go into hopefully more detail, we'll defeat the third seal, which is famine, Rahab. It says, verse 5, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. Look and see, and I beheld, and lo, look, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances, had a pair of balances, or, or, or one, one could say scales, had a pair of scales or balances in his hand. Shostenya and Sisa Metita e Sila Samau Ayahum in a home Goracha Feresa Weta Bearsum Lime Yetek Emetoa Be Eju Amizan Ayaze. So the one who sat Be Eju Mizan Yaze. Mizani Yaze. He had a a this is a peer but in Glazenia. You understand know Baba Marinya basically that he had not a peer of balance, but he had scales in his hands. You understand know in other words weights and measure balances. Now, right here there's a footnote that the Goracha, even the word Goracha is not really black. It's like what is it? What would you say? Gray? Goracha? Goracha. Almost like black and white. It reminds me of the Masonic checkerboard. You understand? Know it has a checkerboard significance, but it's not typical black. It didn't say tikur. You understand? Know it says guracha, ferres weta. Now, the black here indicating dearth. Dearth. Jeremiah 14, chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. Take note, an excellent reference. It signifies the color of the visage or the face of famished people. Is that the situation in Egypt? The people survive off of six dollars a day. The average Egyptian makes about six dollars, earns about six dollars. Six dollars, you know, six American dollars, six dollars a day. Well, most of y'all might spend for whatever. Lamentations for a happy meal. Lamentations chapter four, verses eight to nine. Lamentations chapter five, verses nine to ten is another note and we hope to touch on that. The black horse of the Guracha Ferres is a symbol of the spreading of famine, which causes people to have a black or Guracha visage look on their face, you know, kind of a, 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 a grayish, right? Kind of a grayish look on their face, but they probably said black because the people that were being envisioned 
people were like those people of you could say the Middle East and East Africa, you understand, when they are famine. So we can take a picture, even use Ethiopia, for example, as an example. And when we look at uh, Psalm 87, verse 4, I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia, this man was born there. It's interesting in that connection as well. Rahab being Egypt. So I'll make mention prophetically of Egypt and Babylon. And we know what Babylon is in this prophetic, or we should know, the confusion. A balance now, a mizan, is a scale used to weigh precious things. So the mizan, be'iju, mizan, yaze is a scale used to weigh precious things, but here it is used to weigh food. We learn this in the very next uh, kutel, the very next verse. It is used to weigh food, thus showing that food is scarce. In other words, we're already getting the signs and indication is saying corn is going up, grain is going up, the food prices are going up. So for those who are able to, it will be a good idea to store up certain um, non-perishable type of grain you understand even wherever you're at right now because you don't know how long you're going to be at where you're at so wherever you're at right now if possible at least store up some of these dry grains so at least one would have a basic constitution you understand in times of famine because we're already getting the signs that food is scarce those of you who are wise try to cut out these fast food stuff Stop going to these idle, these idle food shops and and other kind of junk stuff, if if possible. I mean, if one once in a while, I'm sure that's good, but make sure you store up something. Try to store up something because food. We're already getting the signs that food scarcity is on the horizon. Leviticus chapter 26, 26. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 16. Now the very next verse says. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say. So when I read this and I was reminded of this, I got a word picture in my mind, which those who will see the video version of it hopefully can see. That it says in verse 6, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts. So what is the midst of the four beasts? One has to understand the heavens here. You see the midst of the four beasts? In the midst of the four beasts, or the four corners of the earth. You understand? In the midst of the four beasts, and you can look at that if we pan to the next one as the four beasts right here. We have the the winter solstice, the fall equinox, the summer solstice, and the, and the spring equinox. Or we have the prophetic four gospels, the man, the eagle, the lion, and the bull. You understand? At those four corners, or prophetically, the United Hebrews, we have USA, you understand, the United States of America on one side, we have England, you understand, on the next side, and then we have the Judah Authority, or Ethiopia, on the next side, and this is now concerning God's people, you understand, the regions of God's people dispersion. Now, when you see England, you can also add the, uh, the, the the Euro or the European, the European region. But the Europeans being under England, in other words, England having a cap on that. That's what, why they have the European World Order because they're trying to break with England. But England is a little bit too strong still, you know, to break with. So you have in, in the so-called Illuminati, there are splits in their order. You have the Jesuits on one side and the papal, and then you have the Protestant and the British and the Anglo and the, and the Anglo British or what they call the British Israelitism, which is part of their uh, mentality. They are actually Israelites on the next side, and they broke away from. Remember the Pope Protestant Reformation said that that, that Rome was the beast. You know what I mean? Basically identified Rome with the beast and with Babylon. That's Martin Luther and the printing of the Bibles and all of that King James Version was a part of that breakaway and the coming to America was trying to get far away from the influence of the so-called Roman Catholic Church right there. So we have scripturally where it says, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four 
beast, this now signifies the alignment with the celestial, you understand, of the galactic center. In the midst of the four beasts, say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, why is it saying? Be'aratum in sisocha mekakeladim anda erboa sindea bedinar sosta erboa gebisima bedinar zaitna oinenema ata gudasila samau. Now, what's interesting is this is that a dry measure, the dry measure that is spoken. Because it speaks about a, a, a measure Or it says On the erbo You understand Of sende Of wheat um, Bedinar You understand Sourced Three measures Three erbo uh, Gebisim Bedinar Now what's interesting about the word Gebis Gebs That's also a name You understand For Egypt It's a play on the Ethiopic Gept Gept a Gebis Gebs Keps, keps, you understand? Uh, heps, you understand? The kabata, the the gibata, the gabata, the kabata, the habasha, the geps, or uh, Egypt, or, or barley. You understand? So it's a relation of barley because that was a product that even in the time of famine that Yosef was able to uh, store up as well. So it's a dry measure, almost equal to a quart. So the erbo. Is calculated as being a dry measure that's equal almost to a quart. Now, what's a dinar? A dinar is a currency. It's a singular for dinari, dinari, or dinari. You understand? Which is plural of dinar. Like we have, we we have a shilling today. A shilling is is equal to a shilling for those into English English money, which is the dominant world money right now. Uh, under America, of course, but it's it's the, the the Lords of London that calculate for the American market because they're basic Anglo-American. You know, America. They came from England. You know the connection. You should. Now, a denarius was the chief silver coin of the Romans. Of, of the Romans, it was a chief silver. So the dinar was a silver coin, a coin that was made out of silver, and it was considered a good pay. For a day's labor, that that a dinar, if one worked for you and you gave them a dinar, that was a good a good day's work, you know, a good pay for a day's one day's work. So when we understand this, it says that a measure of wheat, about a quart of wheat, would cost basically a day's labor for a penny. It's basically saying for a, a penny is very dubious there, but a day's work would be basically um, if, if you un, under these conditions that it's speaking about in Revelation chapter 6 it means that for about a quart of, of wheat right, you're going to be spending a day's labor and you will get three measures you're saying three measures about three quarts of barley for a day's labor so how would imagine now eating seven days a week under such conditions now in Egypt present day 2011 Egypt the average Egyptian only makes about six American dollars now how much I don't know how much uh, wheat and barley you can buy under such circumstances by today's present price prices now it mentions finally finally it mentions oil oil and wine. This is interesting because that region of the world is known for olive oil. The original context they say was olive oil, but can be extended to modern petroleum oil. They said prices already have been going up, and our prices are going to go up again or anticipated because of what's happening in the so called Arab world, and particularly Egypt. But here in the scripture says, And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. We know that no matter what. America and the Western nations, the Gentiles, are going to make sure they have enough oil. This is what the whole Iraq thing, or what was behind Operation Iraqi Liberation, oil.